Hi, Arlene Schiffer here from MJ's Handmaids, a company from MJ's Blues and Dance Club, a virtual reality lives blues venue. Pretty cool, you should check it out. Um, today, I'm going to show you how to make a round cabochon like this, just a, a round pendant with something like this to it. Um, moon and it's uh, two different pieces of thick wire wrapped together with a smaller wire and pretty easy to do you're going to need approximately depending on what how big you want it these are about 13 to 15 millimeter i believe or they're 15 to 18 i'm not exactly sure um so you'll need round cabochons for this particular uh, tutorial but you don't have to stick with those you can use any kind of uh, shape that you want it's really up to you but because if you don't know how to do this I'm showing you on a round I would start with that um, to shape some stuff I'm to shape the frame and the moon I use a ring mandrel and to because you know, it keeps it round of course <laughs> Um, gonna need a hammer you will need flat nose you might possibly want to use nylon pliers the jaws are nylon and flat um, but really it's it's optional it's not mandatory uh, that the wire that I'm using this here is approximately seven inches long and it's a 16 gauge dead soft um, it's reclaimed wire so it's not a true dead soft and it's pretty much in most spots <laughs> it's dead soft but not all the way through it's it's got its uh um quirkiness to it for the lack of better words uh, you'll need two pieces about seven inches and another one about three inches so that you can create your moon um again flat nose wire cutters i would use heavy duty for your thick wire and um, even for trimming and whatnot, the, you don't want to hurt your smaller cutters uh, and put dents in them or possibly even break them, which is unlikely unless they're really cheap. I believe that's close to it. I'm going to be using with what I have done in the past with these examples. I've done this. A bit. This is my sixth attempt to show you how I do this but I've been using a 28 gauge and um, it's pretty it, it seems to be sliding a little bit too much so I'm gonna kick it up a notch and use 26 gauge for the tutorial um, this should be fun a learning experience for us both um, you'll need a hammer and a block I think I showed you not sure but a block to hammer your anything you want to hammer anyways um, you don't have to hammer paddles out it's not mandatory it just you know it's part of the design so if you want to go ahead and hammer them um, if not you know it's again up to you you can you will want um, a way to file file them down um, by me using this particular style file I go one way with my direction when I'm filing um, back and forth and really nothing good will come of that I'm pretty sure so if you're ready um, one second so I can pick up a little bit and I'll be back I'll try this again. okay so these I'm gonna be um, wrapping the bigger cabochon um, you can see different they are different sizes different thicknesses this cute little one nice thin wafer um, they're nice and easy to work with but I'm going to be using this one and you want your moon so that it's going to sit on top and your your stone won't go through you know give it a little push don't scratch your stone and how we make that is I didn't cut a three inch piece but I did cut my seven inch piece 
to show you how to make the frame. Making the moon is pretty much exactly the same, only you're going to make it smaller. So with the frame, to get your circle, you want it just a little bit big enough so your uh, cabochon will go through. Um, that way you can get wire to wrap around it, but you're also going to need to add a backing so that it doesn't, my backings are terrible, um, so it doesn't fall through. Hopefully it won't be showing you how to do a bad back. <laughs> so, and with this, because of the size of my cabochon, I wrote down what sizes I'll need. Uh, about a seven, nine. For that, I need about nine, size nine, nine and a quarter, but I'm going to go smaller because that was for the original design with a lot of um, wrapping going on. So I'm going to start at about seven and a half, find my center point best I can, and woo nilly, and start to bring my wire around and go straight. Go straight. Oopsie daisy. Sorry about that, folks. Go straight. And of course, I didn't find my center, but that's okay. Um, so you have two straight. I didn't show you any of that. You have two straight. Um, the prongs go straight up, and we're doing. We did this on about a seven and a half. But I just want to make sure it's going to be. That should be okay. Because I'm using a 26 gauge, I don't need a lot of room. So that'll be good. So I'm going to go back to the mandrel and just bring it all the way around with that seven and a half. Get some light. And there we go. Now when you do your moon, make sure you go in a full circle. Um, I can show you on a, on a, okay, let me just cut a piece of wire, for goodness sakes. Mm -hmm. That's approximately a couple inches, right? <laughs> Okay, so to do that, again, you find the center point the best you can. If you want to use your ruler, you can and mark it if you want to. But go all the way around with them to cross over and even curve them back down some the best you can. So you have a circle going on this way whoops again I'm gonna have a problem with that when you make your gap and it's still round instead of going up shooting up <laughs> like well you you probably understand and probably know what I'm talking about um, this is just so that it stays round uniformed However big you want your gap. And there you go. Bloop. Like that. Now I've got too many going on. I really didn't intend on making that many. So I might hammer that. Just file it down. Hammer it out. And uh, save it for another time. A different project maybe. Don't throw your scrap stuff out. Put it aside. You'll find use for it. Okay. Make sure you file down. Like I said, you go in a certain direction, one direction. And you file it down. Do one wire at a time until it's nice and smooth. A good way to test just if you don't have anything really and you don't mind a little scratchy. You have, we're pretty sensitive right there. 
our cheeks are really sensitive so you'll feel you'll feel it for sure um just you know don't stab yourself but if it feels sharp to you then you know you need to file it some more so i'm going to create my back which i use i um, forgot 22 gauge can use a 24 but because these are small cabochons um i don't want to have a lot going on in the back it looks like i might be using 24 because i can't find my 22. <laughs> okay so, see learning experience for us all i'm gonna just grab a bunch of it don't know how much i'm gonna need or if i can even see it I wonder where I put that 22. So with this, I'm going to... I should show you how to bring these up, huh? Hmm. Okay, let's do that. With this, I'm just going to bring your wires so that they're standing up straight. You want to bend the wire, not the frame. So concentrate on what you're doing. <laughs> Ouch. And then have at it. These are not the right size pliers. Came a little bit funky. There we go. Mm, looks good. Nice and even. Sort of except for up top. But we'll fix that. Add a frame. We're right back. And this is where I need to see myself. Oopsie daisy. No, that's not going to work. Okay. 
Okay, I found, uh, I went, I paused for a minute and found my 22 gauge to make this easier. I'm um, going to add it back real quick. Actually, it should be going in one direction here. This is to hold your little stone in. Two reps. Until you want seen up in the front. Two reps. Bring it up some. Straighten your wire out. side so that I put it on the opposite side because I want my wire not to curve um, I want it to go underneath it's not working on top on top And just two wraps. That's all you want showing in the front part. And the front part is here. This wire is coming over the top of the back and under in the front. So your cabochon fits inside the frame. And that's on purpose. to keep this all in check. <laughs> Get it tight to the frame.
Mm, this is gonna save the day. <laughs> going to be on the back side of the cabochon so nobody's going to feel it it won't catch on clothing in other words perfect <laughs> This one here I'm going to clip so it will tuck into at least halfway around the frame so nothing catches on it. Maybe. ones. I'm gonna same with these. I'm gonna cut them so they're about halfway around the frame.
I think that'll work out as a rock pretty good. Mm, I can stay. Let's see. Nothing's gonna fall through. I'm gonna shape it. Kinda. That's nice. The cabochon fits in between the um, wraps, which I should have mentioned. You want that to happen. You don't want the cabochon to sit on top of them. You want them to sit in them. So that's going to be a nice lock. And now I'm going to show you how to attach this. But uh, first, we want to hammer. We want to hammer before we put the stone in all together. So we need to hammer these. That might be too long. But we're going to hammer these. And we're going to hammer these. So hold on, let me set up for the hammering. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you how to hammer the moon and the tips to your um, frame. I have done these. Let's get some light on it. I have done these, um, but I'm going to show you what I did. Now, the, the part that I want showing, the part that you're going to want to show, will be the part facing the back of your frame. What you want to do when you hammer is have that on the face of your block. That way when you hammer it's it ends up smooth and there's a lot less um, uh, tool removal that'll be necessary but they'll come out smooth like you see and, and to take care of all of that you just you put it down nice and flat hold it it's flat Try to separate them. You want to do one at a time. I'm at the wrong angle, so this is that's why I did these already. I can't get the proper hammering on video, so but I want to show you basically. Now my hammer is a bit round, a little bit, so I'm going to be angling it. Some people might have flat, more of a flat surface, so you can just bang away on it. But with this one, it's a little bit rounded, so I need to make sure my my hip as flat a surface as possible to flatten out the paddles. And I'm just tapping. And because it's copper, it doesn't take a whole lot to flatten them out. Um, and, and if you want to flare, you kind of drag your hammer a little bit across the top of them, or you can actually shape them before while you're filing and whatnot, and that'll help give uh, a more natural flare look to them. But that's about all you do. And so the side that I want smooth is smooth. And the reason it's the back side is when I fold them over like so. That's going to be flipped back over this way and then it will be showing. So. So you understand why I do it on that side. Sorry I keep hitting my camera. Oh, Lord. Thing weighs more than two of me. <laughs> I'm strong. I can handle it. Okay. So that's the cabochon we want in there. Now one in one of my um, trials to get this down, I used some tape to hold this and the flared moon to stay in place because you want an even an even wrap all the way around and that's it, it, it as you can see it hasn't been easy <laughs> um, I'm a little all over the place um, and this one here isn't even something I'm going to be putting into uh, even though it's the nicest one I have, the one I like the best, it turned out to be my favorite. Um, the stone keeps popping out. When I hammered it, I must have um, widened my top frame. And then attaching it, I probably widened it even more because now it just pops out on the side. 
and I don't want to try and fix that, especially while the stone is in there on risk scratching it. So I'm just going to, it's a good display model. And so to help fix that, I double check and what you're supposed to do anyways. Um, so that's not going to, my stone's not going to slide out of that and it's not going to come out of the back either the way that the back frame is. So again, like I said, I tape it. I have some painter's tape. Um, if you don't have painter's tape, any kind of tape will really do. If it's super sticky, um, first stick it to your shirt or your pants or maybe a dish towel or something to help remove some of the sticky. That way you can remove it from your frame without it leaving behind any sticky messes that you're going to have a hard time cleaning up. And you don't want to use abrasives on your stones or your metal. You don't really know how the stone will react. And don't, you just don't want to chance it cut and dry. So I have, um, most people use the blue. I have yellow, so that's what I'm using. Still a bit sticky. And these moon, these uh, are a labradorite that I have. They're not the AAA grade I always usually get. <clears throat> I decided to try out this bundle, and they have some amazing flash and color to them. I do love them. Um, so yeah, they got my vote. You know, new distributor, try them out. I'll go back maybe. So yeah, tape it pretty close. I only want to tape half because I want to wrap the other half. <laughs> I'm just guesstimating here. Right about there. Let's see. Looks good to me. So yeah, we have that taped. This is going to stay open because I want my wire to go through. And if you remember, I was going, I'm going to use a 26 gauge. And I left it unprotected. Not smart. I don't think I'm going to need a heck of a lot, so I'm going to go with about maybe two feet here. I have, uh, did not write that part out. Usually with the 28 gauge, it's about two feet, um, two and a half feet, depending on how wire intensive I want my wrap. So, um, I just folded this around my finger like this and went back around so that I can lock my wire into place so it doesn't unravel. I left it so that it would, um, it had the chance to unravel and that wasn't smart of me. So one sec. And that's all. It's easy to grab and un unlock. You don't have any bends in it. And it's it's really good, especially for travel. Or if you have no storage. Um, it works out. Alright. Going to find the center point. So I'm going to do half and half, so I'm going to find a center point in my wire and work um, half and half with that. See what I'm doing? <laughs> do you see what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm going to get this folded part into my frame. Uh, 
on the half on, on I have the um, if you remember correctly the backing goes right down the middle so this is going to be on one half of it the open half going to bring the wire to the back and one up give it okay I need my lamp and magnifier so here we go the fun begins um make sure my little view window we need to squish this back over some. Okay. What I want to do is I want to bring this back down. Put that right there like that. Like that. First wrap in there, good. And I'm going around. I want. I'm gonna take the other side and just sneak it through so it's out of the way. But I want it to go onto the other side. So before. Maybe I should wait that out. So I'll hold it instead. Right, now, I want to wrap around. You, you can't just drag this wire through because your backing is going to block any passages um, to, to just slide the wire down. So you're going to be doing some weaving. It's not sewing. Make sure I have the right one. Oh, I'm going to come up through the back. I almost did that incorrectly. You want to come through the back, in between the wires, because you're going to wrap around this bottom frame, the back frame, five times. Kind of shape it when you bring it around. Give it a shape with your finger. So you see how it, I'm letting go <laughs> and it's still. I let go and you see how it stay, keeps the shape. That's what you want to do. That's one. And that's why you don't want to so it's not red. This is five. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> yep, it'll slide. Don't worry. You can bring it. You can slide it right back.
Okay, that's five wraps around the back ring. I'm going to go around six on my sixth one and I bring it through both frames the top moon and the back. Bring it down, straighten it out. You can also do this with a half round wire, which a lot of people will probably do. It's for some people it's easier. I'm um I'm just good. I don't I don't it doesn't matter to me either way. put my finger in there you can see the wire kind of shapes around my finger and it helps keep it straight without kinking and I'm kind of guiding it as I'm pulling to go through the frame both frames and I want to wrap two times around that's one and that's two and I do the same I kind of shape it to the wire the two wires so it kind of knows where it's going but it just makes it easier and the second pass, go through just the one in between the two frames. And you're going to wrap five times. I think that we're going to get at least four of these rotations out of this before we meet up to here four or five of them so I'm going to do a couple up real quick off camera um, but you all know the difference I'll pick up right where we're leaving off here or you know five steps ahead <laughs> hold on okay I got up to how many is that from the center frame remember the back frame from the center up I got one two three four five six different rotations of going up now I'm going to because I'm just have that much wire left with the um, unmeasured two feet that I cut <laughs> um, I'm just going to finish wrapping it around here and then I'm going to start with the other side. So it'll probably be about six different wraps to get around there. It's getting small, so it's hard for me to grab. I'm pretty. I'm going to have to guide it through too, because the end is getting a bit brittle I'm afraid it might snap but I don't think so this is getting a little hard sure my pieces aren't overlapping see how I'm kind of what's rolling it in there I think that's four five I'm going to stop at five to keep it uniform. Looks a little awkward. 
not so uniform, but let's get started on the other side. And so that was six rotations. One, two, three, four, five, six. Starting from the center, ending with five wraps around the back frame. And here's the other side. Now, what I have already went ahead and done was um, get my wire that's got to be on this side already through. And I, I brought it through the back. And then one time over this, the, the center back wire. And then through the frame around both large frame pieces and I'm going to start so it's kind of uniform looking to the, this one here next to the um, attachment the attached back so keep them pretty centered type so and just do the same thing we're going to want six rotations of a, a five two weave going in here Guide your wire, don't let it guide you. Which I tend to do. <laughs> it's like mm, the wire knew best. But not now, please. I can't get that to tighten anymore because it is as tight as it wants to get. I don't want to force too much. I don't want it to kink. Gonna look cooler than I am, and I would anticipate it. So bring this back. Didn't need it there. <laughs> Six. Get this true. Holy cow! It's pretty tight. Whoopsie. Again, I'm going to do the same with this side as I did with that side. And I think I'll do it off camera so as not to bore the daylights out of you. I 
that's four, this is five. And go through again, grab both thick frames. Now on this side, if you don't get under the top frame, you can do catch it like that because it's open. There's nothing blocking your way. That's one. Five. Now I want to do the double, and then I'll I'll pause and finish it off the wrapping part, and we'll move on to the next step for you. close to even. <laughs> and we'll be right back. I'm going to finish this off, off camera and I'll be back to show you how we finished this part. And that's that. Okay, I finished the other side, and I didn't have enough wire to go um, for the end. I have my six rotations on the other side, but I couldn't end it in five wraps, but I had enough to do three, and I didn't even have to cut it. it 
um, ended up being able to tuck in perfectly. But what I'm going to have to do, which is why I didn't finish this one off, um, I have five wraps. I'm going to need to reduce it by two to even them out. And you do that by just because it's going to be clipped it's okay if it wants to keep you just want to be careful still And wire is why I have such great nails. <laughs> right, that's three. And that's three. And half deck it moved. Okay, you want it like that. Even everything out. Looking pretty good. And we can finish off with these. this you want to fold it back away from the front front of your piece um, because you're going to be rolling back over towards the front of your piece so you want these good flat ends to be your focal or it, uh, the part that's showing jump ring or bail shapers is a good tool to have for this <laughs> and I happen to have one if you don't um, a pencil a pen a sharpies might be too big um, your needle nose if they're wide enough those will, those will work out great maybe you have some type of a round metal rod of some sort that would be a good size see this is going to be too big so I'm gonna make it big 
And when you do do these, the part that you want to, um, the prongs should be on the part on the back side. And you're going to roll them forward. So if you put them right up against your, if you have a bale anchor and you put them right up against here, you're going to have an even roll. Yeah, see, look at how big this is. Holy cow. What? Hmm. Wee! It's like a long neck. We'll call this the giraffe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, when you come across something like that, you can either cut it and shorten it, which means rehammering and whatnot, but your stone is in there. And the vibration, I, I just don't, I prefer not to do that. So, what I would do normally is cut it down file it back up and turn it into a shorter veil like this one you know and they're just as nice you know if not nicer um, I think more masculine than um, a longer veil I think that's a little bit more suited for a woman but then again I don't know I'm, I'm a girl I'm not a guy I don't know what they would prefer if they would even but uh, that's what my thought is so and there you have it that is done I hope you've learned something from this um, again my name is Arlene Schiffer you can find me at mjsblues.com that's one word m-j-s-b-l-u-e-s dot -E com you can spell that one out on your own <laughs> uh, Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel if you like this. Check out uh, MJ's Stream Solutions channel. Um, if you want to learn how to broadcast, become an internet DJ, um, little things like that. I mean, th that's cool. That's Those are cool gigs to, to land, too. So uh, you want to learn how to do something like that and get up and running. He's the guy to talk to, Cap Jack Blazer. My husband, Eric Schiffer. So, uh... Thanks again for viewing. Please subscribe. Ding the little bell thing so you know when, if and when I upload another video, which I have promised to in the past that I haven't delivered. So um, if that tells you anything, I'll get there. I promise. <laughs> yeah, there they go again. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.